Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. The statement of Prime Minister Narendra Modi during his Independence Day speech yesterday on Gilgit, Baltistan in Pakistan, occupied Kashmir and Baluchistan has triggered a spate of reactions from all over. This statement, which was preceded by his comments at the Parliamentary Party meet of the BJP last week, raising the same issue, has resulted in discussion about what it means. India has been traditionally wary of mentioning Baluchistan, especially in its narrative in the Indo-Pakistan relations. In fact, in 2009, when, the, when then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh had agreed to a mention of Baluchistan and the unrest there, he was chastised for by the political parties as well as the commentators. So what has made Prime Minister Modi to not only mention it, but also aggressively attack Pakistan for its human rights violations there? Is this the beginning of a new policy or strategy towards Pakistan? Is India part of a larger initiative to free Baluchistan? Many questions have cropped up which needs discussion. To discuss this, I have with me Vivek Karju, former ambassador, Rana Banerjee, former special secretary, cabinet secretariat, Professor S.D. Muni, Professor Emeritus at the JNU, Vinod Sharma, political editor, Hindustan Times, and on the phone line from Karachi is Nusrat Amin, senior journalist. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Karju, is this a, is this a change in strategy, a very uh, thought, well thought out straight change in strategy? No, I think it certainly marks a departure from the past. Uh, but uh, let us see it in context. Uh, first, uh, it can't be uh, simply stated that India was keeping away from mentioning Baluchistan. The, uh, the Sharm el Sheikh joint statement was in the context of the Pakistani charge that India is interfering in Baluchistan's affairs uh, by fomenting trouble there. And that was something which is was so patently absurd uh, that uh, the Indian commentariat as well as the political parties took umbrage incorrectly. Now, in this particular case, what the Prime Minister, to my mind, is informing Pakistan and the international community is that uh, India has cards that India simply will not accept Pakistani continued interference in the affairs of Jammu and Kashmir and in particular what has happened after the killing of the terrorist Burhan Wani. So, uh, to my mind, it's a welcome departure from the, the kind of reactivity and passivity to an extent which, which the Indian state was showing to Pakistan, uh, towards Pakistani interference in JNK's affairs in the past because please uh, remember that the first reference to Baluchistan as well as uh, uh, to POK came in the all parties meeting on Jammu and Kashmir. So that is the context which should not be overlooked. Okay. Professor Muni, well, this I, passivity now turn in, turning into you know some kind of an well, aggressive, I'm, I'm, aggressive approach. Well, I am slightly worried about, uh, uh, you know, Kardju's... Uh, uh, explanation of link with Kashmir. Uh, why should it uh, be linked with? It should not have been. If it is uh, a response to the uh, situation in Kashmir, in order to tell Pakistan that we also have something up, up our sleeves, is not a good policy. But I would say that Baluchistan should have been raised long back. And in 2009, when Manmohan Singh raised it, we are forgetting one very important aspect of uh, uh, sorry, POK and Baluchistan. At that time, the Chinese had come into POK. They had started projects in POK and therefore we thought we must look at the whole question of Indo-Pak relations in a much wider context. Of course, it didn't cut uh, much ice. But I'll tell oh. you one thing that if it is an indication of a shift in the policy, it will have to be backed up by concrete measures which are still to be seen. In the sense, are we really prepared on these two very, very significant components of India-Pakistan engagement, POK on the one hand, Baluchistan on the other? Do we have a policy package to back it up of what we have said? Concrete uh, measures, you said. What are I, the concrete measures? Like, uh, okay, you issue a white paper on POK to begin with. You issue the detailed records of human rights violations in Baluchistan. Take it to the international fora. I mean, so far, India is not even willing to allow an international conference in India on Baluchistan. 
if that is the status at which we are today, uh, then uh, in Kashmir, POK uh, issue has been raised. But PO, uh, the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly continues to leave the seats of the POK uh, members uh, vacant. Now, if uh, you know, these are the uh, obvious gaps. And unless there is a concrete move to see that we are going to fill, fill up these gaps and whether we have all other consequences to or all other components of a of a robust policy to back it up, then it makes a sense. Otherwise, you know, we, we raise the Hurriyat issue. We will not talk unless you continue to talk with the Hurriyat. And then within two months, we change it. Now, that should not be. So we'll the have to wait and watch policy. if there is going to be any such thing. We'll let us. Let me get. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, may uh, I just <laughs> make one comment? Yes, sir. Girish, may I make what just one comment? Yes, very quickly. No, my only thing is that I think as a beginning, what the what pri the prime minister is saying that Pakistan's own record in these places, Baluchistan has been so and POK has been so abysmal th that it does not lie in its mouth to speak about human rights and other matters uh, in respect of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Yes, that, that, is, the first that is true. That is true. Yes, he is signalling. Yes, and that now is the we'll signal. We have to really see what Pakistan says, and yes. I agree with Professor Muni that there should be. Uh, there should be a regular policy, but let us see on let that. See. And, and certainly, okay. uh, it should not go the Hurriyat way. There I okay. agree. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me get Mr. Amin. Mr. Amin, Mr. Amin, what is how, how, you know? It is said that this reaction of the Indian Prime Minister was was some kind of a reaction to the to what the what the Pakistan Prime Minister said about you know Independence Day, August 14th of your Independence Day being you know Kashmir Day, Kashmir Freedom Day, and all. So no, it was this the, this provocative statement which apparently uh, you know brought in this kind of a reaction. So do you see this this how, how does Pakistan see this uh, statement? Actually, it's a very different thing. What does Pakistan see this situation? Actually, I can I can present here my view on on the whole situation. Right. And um, I would reluctantly say that uh, that first thing first. The fact is, uh, Modi Sahab is a seasoned politician. He is the prime minister, currently a prime minister of a great democracy, the biggest democracy of the world. And he has a perception, has a vision. And this was the vision that had made him visit Pakistan. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, meeting his counterpart here in, 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 in Lahore and attending the ceremony, uh, my wedding ceremony of his daughter-in-law. But uh, whatever he has said on the Indian Independence Day yesterday, I guess, uh, actually, uh, one thing I must, uh, I must clarify here before saying anything, that BJP, he is the head and he is the prime minister of a party that has a, that has a definite tendency and potential of bringing change in India, uh, unlike Congress, who has almost become an establishment. So he, he supposes himself a responsible person to address to every quarter. And whatever he said yesterday, I guess, to my, maybe I'm wrong, but what he has said yesterday is the follow-up. And it was out of the pressure that was built up by Indian media. Actually, he's not addressing to Indian nation, or he's not addressing to the people of the subcontinent or that of the world. He is, I guess, 80 percent, 90 percent, he's addressing to the Indian media that has built up the pressure after, in follow-up of the Vani's killing and whatever had happened in form of rice and arson in, in, in Indian administered Kashmir. I think it was a pressure that made uh, uh, Modi Saab uh, passed the, uh, uh, made such 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 a comment. So you don't think? And uh, <clears throat> maybe yes, maybe I, I have I have I have no doubt. Maybe he has been receiving some positive uh, responses from anywhere in the world, including Pakistan, including Punjab, Karachi, Baltistan, or whatever, wherever. I mean, I mean, uh, why would I doubt? But it doesn't mean that is something extraordinary happening happening in these part of Pakistan. I don't. Okay, think. so you don't think that you know the, the, you don't think that Pakistan should be concerned with this statement. It is you are saying that he he his his statement is essentially aimed at the Indian media and the Indian people. Okay, we will uh, leave it well, there. Well, well, 
Yes, yes. Well, I, I, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 whatever I, I have said, this is quite irrelevant to what Pakistan, uh, 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 what Pakistan is thinking, what the government of Pakistan and the establishment of Pakistan is, is thinking of it. Okay. I don't know how they are going to react to it. Okay. I don't know how how okay. important uh, this statement is to the establishment, okay. the establishment and the government of Pakistan. Okay. And even I don't know how they are going to react to it. But, okay. But okay, yes, Mr. Amin. Uh, are, Pakistan. That, no, Mr. Amin, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Mr. Banerjee, so, you know, the mention of Balochistan in the past would have, would have you know, would, would bring some kind of say, very severe reactions. But now, in the context in which the Prime Minister has, has made this statement, how do you look at this? Uh, I don't see any reason mm. to be defensive about it or shy about it because mm. this is a very uh, definite message and a signal. Uh, the extent to which it will be interpreted will depend. But Do you see this as a major departure in policy or a strategy? Uh, maybe. I mean, I'm not able to decide at this stage. But certainly it is a signal conveying that, you know, in terms of human rights violations, the Pakistanis have to get off their high horse because they have to look within. They have uh, many warts of their own. And to remind the world about it, there is no harm in mentioning this thing. That, you know, situation is bad in Balochistan. It's very bad also in Gilgit, Baltistan. And in terms of political rigging, etc., in Azad Kashmir, there is, or in what is called the Pakistan occupied Kashmir, there are no political freedoms worth the name. Whichever government comes to power in Pakistan, they get, uh, you know, uh, government of their own liking, of their own affiliation installed in POK. This has been happening for years and years. So but the fact that, you know, all these years, India, it, it, the Indian government, whichever government has been there, different parties have been in government, the policy was to, you know, not even mention it, you know. No, that is a something different, so, you see, because Pakistan has been very, uh, you know, keen to allege all sorts of, you know, involvement in terms of covert activities and operations by uh, our but, agencies, which yes. have been very much untrue and a myth. Of no, but their that imagination. Was, it, it, no, in that it, context, it, was, it used to be ignored. These, these kind well, of statements yes, used to be ignored. We, we did ignore it for a while, but then they have brought it in in various ways and uh, more aggressively in the recent past. So you think it's a reaction to that? Uh, well, it's a definite no, signal just, being no, conveyed. No, sir, my question is: Is this just a reaction, or is this a change in the larger policy? It's not just a reaction. It could uh, indicate a change, but change. Uh, yes. Okay. No, I was saying that caution so far in India on not going and speaking about Baluchistan was uh, that uh, it will be used by Pakistan to bash uh, Baluchistan independence or freedom movement. And this is what the Pakistanis actually did after 2009. And what happened was that those who were fighting for Baluchistan were all dubbed as anti-national, were all dubbed as agents of India and the uh, army was let loose on them. Therefore, there was a caution, there was an understandable caution to see that the Baluchis did not suffer unduly because, uh, at the hands of the Pakistan Okay, that's, it, that's an interesting point. We'll, we'll, uh, Vinod, Vinod, you know, there, there, was, there is also this feeling or, you know, some, some years back there was this, uh, there was the stories coming in that the West, the US, you know, and, and others, the West, were trying to redraw the map of, you know, of Middle East. Balochistan was one of the things. Freeing Balochistan was one of the pro was part of the project. You think that project is now being revived? Well, I think that uh, in this, I mean, if you are going to, if I want to answer this question without adequate information at my command, I'd be rendering unto Caesar, which is not Caesar's right now. As I see it, it currently appears to me a tactical move, a tactical move in the sense that asking Pakistan not to occupy a high moral ground on the human rights questions. Nothing else connects our side of Kashmir, POK, Gilgit, Baltistan and Baluchistan right. except human rights. Correct. That's the only lead motive that runs through all these four places. But in and none of these statements do the words human rights please, figure at all. No, I'm saying this is the Prime Minister said that I've got letters from people from Baluchistan. I've got messages after I said that I mentioned Baluchistan and POK and Gilgit-Baltistan. 
I personally feel that multi, if we are there in, uh, in Baluchistan and if we are not there, we are stupid as a nation state. Uh, if we are uh, there, we are we are there, there I don't want to adumbrate. If we are not there, we are stupid as a nation state. We surely have some degree of empathy for the people there. And we have surely have some degree of strategic policy we have had since independence. Because remember that Kashmir and Bal uh, uh, Baluchistan, Baluchistan have some similarity in history. Yes. A brief similarity in history. In the way, in the way they actually well, Initially, they were not willing to join exactly. with Pakistan. Like, oh, Kashmir was not willing. And there have been, there have been students who have been protesting in support of Bal 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 Baluchistan, Punjabi students, Punjabi intellectuals in the past, you know. I know Salamat Ali was in jail. He was jailed by Bhutto for having been pro Baluchistani. Najam has spent time in jail. You see, it's a, it, Najam Sethi. I mean, some prominent Pakistanis have spent time in jail on account of their uh, position favoring the Baluchistanis. Khabib Jalib. Khabib Jalib. So, you see, so these people, uh, they are prominent intellectuals, public faces there. But my worry is that we, the mere mention of the situation in POK <laughs> and Gilgit, Baltistan, I've been to Gilgit. Uh, and also Baluchistan. Uh, not Baluchistan, would have served a purpose of countering the Pakistani propaganda of human rights violations in our side of Kashmir. Because remember, Mr. Nawashif didn't merely make that statement. He wrote a formal letter to Ban Ki-moon. He wrote a letter to the Human Rights Commission of uh, United Nations Human Rights Commission. And the UN Human Rights Commission has also made a request to the government of India to visit our side of Kashmir. Now, in that context, I think merely mentioning POK and Gilgit Bastitan, which is the worst case of human rights violations, because there, all kind the subnationalism, which is very strong and subterranean there, is always put down by promoting religio political outfits and, you know, making people, uh, you know, bedazzled by religion, you know, bedazzled, bedazzled people there by religion. So, I mean, I've been there and we met some people uh, who expressed these reservations and they said we are not allowed to state our peace, you know. Now, and insofar as our just... policy on, our policy on, you see, Pakistan calls that part Azad Kashmir because they don't, he doesn't consider them to be citizens of that country. But we consider them, we have seats in the assembly because we consider them as citizens of our country. And in, in support of our claim that the only matter to be discussed is the vocation of the Pakistan occupied Kashmir by Pakistan, you know. Now, there is a difference of approach so, to the issues. So, but bringing not Balochistan have... up, if it is a mere tactics, maybe we can live with it. But bringing something up which should have been done covertly, into the, putting it in the public domain, would be too much of a thing to bite and then digest and swallow. Okay. For okay. a country like okay. India, which has always prided itself as okay. one that doesn't interfere in the affairs of other countries, and there are far too many... Uh, you know, Achilles heels in India as well, where other okay. countries can raise similar issues. Okay, Mr. 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 Kajo, the point made by Vinod, and also and also the fact that how is it going to help us internationally by by bringing this issue out in the open, which which we had not in the past. How is it going to help us internationally? And we have no territorial claim on Baluchistan. I think. No, no, no one has, no, I, uh, we have never, uh, no claim on Baluchistan. We have not even contested ever that it is not part of Pakistani territory. But I think it is a signal to the international community. And it is that signal which would help. What is the signal? India's then? patience is now coming to an end. That is a very important signal for a prime minister to send. No, what the is the signal? The only thing is that that signal has to be sustained. No, sir, the signal. The One signal second. is... That if the Pakistanis... Yeah, please continue. That if the Pakistanis continue with their present policy of intervention in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, and I have urged, I think, on your shows earlier and in writing, that unless we are able to staunch the flow of the Pakistani contaminant into Jammu and Kashmir, we cannot simply address the... the uh, internal situation of Jammu and Kashmir because Pakistan rules by fear. So we are, in, in, uh, we are really uh, signaling to the international community that please don't assume and 
it's also a signal and, to and, Pakistan. And, and, don't okay. assume sir, sir, that one it will be business as usual. Okay, that one is second. important. Sir, one second. So the, does it mean this signal to the international community? What is the what is the response to the international community that India India expects? The, I think the international community uh, does will put pressure on Pakistan. Of course, it will also tell us to cool off, and we should uh, then be in a position to show the stamina to stay the course. But it will put pressure on Pakistan. Till now, what the uh, the actual situation has been that because we've been the good boys, the pressure has been on us always and every time. So and I think Mr. Modi is, is through this reference saying to the international community <coughs> that enough now is enough. I only hope that there will be no more twists and turns okay. as there have been in his <clears throat> Pakistan policy in the past. Okay. No, one point I want to make in, in response to what Vivek just said, you know, there will be, of course, some international reaction. And I think the first will be from China because the CPEC, which is being constructed in POK, also has to run through Balochistan. And the first reaction will have to be China. And there may not be a conventional war with China and Pakistan at the same time. But surely, there'll be, you'll have to face a two, twosome on the diplomatic front in Balochistan. Okay. This is my apprehension. Okay. No, no, yes, I don't yes. think. I, I, no, no, man. No, Mr. Kajo, I, I, Mr. Kajo, I'll listen, come back to you. No, I'll come back to you, sir. I'll come back to you. Pakistan Mr. and China. Kajo, I don't I need think to, we Mr. have to worry about that. No, Mr. Kajo, I'll come back to you. Let, let, let me get Mr. Prasamuni. No, no, this is the point I really wanted to underline. That another link which we are missing, uh, Vinod first said the human rights. The another link is this uh, economic corridor. Now, economic corridor is uh, looking at economic aspect may not be very uh, disturbing to us. What is disturbing is the China-Pakistan equation getting strengthened by this economic by this, corridor. Yes. And it is the economic corridor which passes from Baluchistan to POK. Therefore, both the issues have been raised. Uh, don't forget that recently when Mr. Wang Yi was here, Sushma Swaraj raised this question very, very importantly. And I guess that this whole question of the Chinese presence in POK, Baluchistan and other parts of Pakistan we cannot raise, has been on the table since 2009. That's precisely what I'm saying. Therefore, earlier also I said that the, the, the invisible Saraswati factor here is China. In, in the statements, I hope this is what the government We'll have has, to wait and watch what, the, what but, uh, no, that's how what Chinese I said. Will react. Much would depend no, on no, what the No, no, uh, uh, Professor Muni, Professor Muni, one point of clarification. Yes, yes, please. After the Quetta attack, after the Quetta, uh, recent terrorist Quetta attack, the Pakistani establishment claimed both the Prime Minister and General Rahil Sharif that it was actually directed against the China-Pakistan economic corridor. So the Pakistanis have already brought the Chinese in on this occasion. Yeah, we don't, on, this don't know what the we don't know what the Chinese and we have the Chinese have will react to it. China, no, but Pakistan, both in POK and have... Baluchistan, there is a resistance to this corridor. Yeah. You you know this is the point which is yeah, absolutely Mr. Banerjee, important. That Mr. is Mr. right. Banerjee, is there a larger? Is there? A, do no, you, no, do that you is see, right, and we should. In, is, sir, do, 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 Mr. Banerjee, do you see some kind of a larger uh, plan behind all these things? I can't say, but... This is the 2006 U.S. plan of oh, redrawing, yes. yeah, the, redrawing that, the Middle East and things. Even now, U.S. is, uh, US is interested in not seeing China consolidate in, in this way in Pakistan. No, that's as far the, as free Balochistan is yeah, concerned, you're, you're talking the about the Dana Rohrabacher and the Ralph yes. Peters plan. Yes. But that has not been revived in recent years. But certainly there are elements in USA who, who could, you know, raise this issue again later on. But as regards the Chinese capability to implement the CPAC inside Balochistan, they have enough problems of their own without us having to even lift a finger. Because, you know, the route itself, then the developments in Gwadar, the, the Baluch, the local Baluch are very unhappy about it and they are up in arms and the Chinese are very concerned about the security of their personnel in this area. So much so that uh, they have already asked the, and it's an infantry division level strength of a Pakistani force has already been raised for this specific purpose of looking after the security of the Chinese personnel who are going to come in in the future. That is one aspect. Then the alignment itself is, uh, you know, controversial and the Punjab uh, alignment is being given priority. The Baluch again are unhappy about it. Even the uh, 
Khyber Pakhtunkhwa government is unhappy about it. So there are enough problems in this regard. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, Mr. Mr. Amin, Mr. Amin, you know, this, this also brings into the, you know, as you must have heard what my other panelists are talking about, the China factor. How do you think the China factor will work in this? And do you think that, you know, Pakistan, how is the reaction of Pakistan to this, to the statement of India, how is it going to be? Yeah, in, in, in past few years, there have been resentments and reservations over some mega projects that were that were uh, uh, meant for Baluchistan. They have been uh, targeted so many times. Uh, uh, I don't exactly say, but uh, there were there were so many times there were names of some nationalist cadres in Baluchistan uh, uh, that they were allegedly targeting the mega projects being being uh, uh, I mean under progress. And uh, and but but uh, the China's involvement in in all these projects from right from Gawada port, Baluchistan, through through uh, Azad Kashmir into China, uh, there have been there have been a, a question of controversy, uh, Baluchistan within and 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 Kashmir and and the development project projects through Kashmir to into China. Have been, of course, targeted by India. I don't. I don't think why the whole turmoil, the political turmoil, the, the so many incidents of rights after uh, after Vani's killing, have so badly been ignored. And the, on right, on the other hand, the development works in Azad Kashmir or Pakistani administered Kashmir have been targeted. This is something something ridiculous to me. Um, uh, I don't know. And and apart from the geopolitical future of Azad Kashmir, I don't say what is going to happen in near or in far future. But but what would these development projects be 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 doing? Against or 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 in favor of uh, uh, whatever the geopolitical shape of of Azad Kashmir will be in the in the near future. Okay. I think that okay. uh, a sane a sane leadership like 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 Indian leadership uh, should keep their tradition on no, uh, of not interfering in in other affairs. If they have some complaints, okay. if they have some reservations okay. about Pakistan. Okay. Okay, Mr. They, Amin. We get the, uh, the get the point you made, Mister Mister Karjo, Mister Karjo. Do, would you see this? Some people are seeing what what the prime the prime minister has you know changed the the policy has the strategy has changed. So would it would it also be would it also be seen as an admission of the as of of failure of his previous policy which he had adopted in the last in the in the last two years as far as Pakistan is concerned. You know. I think uh, we really have to wait future developments to make a full assessment of what uh, uh, Mr. Modi plans to do. I think for the time being, he has sent a shot across the bow and the shot is the don't assume. As I said, don't assume that I'll continue with my previous policy of, uh, of showing friendship, of wanting friendship uh, uh, with Pakistan. Don't assume that. We have cards and we can play those cards, although he has been very okay. nuanced and okay. very restrained in these references. Okay, sir. Compare this with what the Pakistanis are doing in Jammu. Okay, and okay, sir. Very quickly, very quickly, we know the moral high ground. You think we'll still retain the moral high ground internationally? You know, I, I, you see, problem, the problem here is that I know that uh, Ambassador Karju doesn't at times agree with me. But this is a manifestation of the face of the basis for which was laid when Barack Obama was here and we joined up completely with the United States on their Indian Ocean Asia Pacific policy. Okay. And this was a, this this had to happen. Okay. Now, how far are we determined to be a frontline state of the United States in this part of the globe? I do not know. Okay. okay. Whether we, we have the we capacity to stay the course, I do not know. Okay. We know. Whether the Okay, um, Vinod. PM's own constituency will accept it. I do not know. Okay, Vinod. I think on that note, we'll end. You know, it is a controversial thing. We'll have to wait and watch. I'll ask my, all my panelists say whether it, this is just a reaction or a full-fledged alternative policy which we are seeing on Pakistan. We'll have to wait and watch and see. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with Andhra the big picture same time tomorrow.